guys, welcome back to a brand new episode. Today's episode, it's gonna be spicy. Spicier than mala. Because I've got a hot girl on the seat today. Give it up to Nicole. Yay. <laughs> Look at how that shoulder roll before she even say hello. Of course. <laughs> Hi. It's my style. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm good, how are you? New hair colour? Yeah, new hair colour. By the time this episode hopefully. out, I hope it's the same colour. Yes, hopefully. How many? How long are you going to keep this one for? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I want to wear green. I want oh, my hair to be green. Like actually, green is such a nice colour. Have you done green yet? Yes, I have actually. What colour have you not done? Probably yellow. Oh, <laughs> That's the only colour I've so not done. It's so hard to have yellow, to bleach your hair to yellow. That's kind of like blonde. Yeah. But not like yellow law. That's the only colour I haven't okay, done. Okay. Yeah, I've been blonde, but not yellow. Okay, mm. okay. By the way, to those of you guys who may not know Nicole, but I'm pretty sure you do. You've seen her dance and she does all kinds of stuff. Super talented. You may know her as The Nictionary on Instagram. So what do people call you nowadays, actually? Do they call you Nictionary? Yeah, they call me Nicole. Well, people on Instagram know that I'm Nicole, but people okay. on TikTok don't know my name. Oh. So they will call me The Nictionary. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for our listeners who are getting to know you for the first time, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. So I, my name's Nicole. <laughs> I'm 30, 30 this year. I'm very sad about that. Congratulations! Anyway, thank you, thank you. In like a month, maybe less than a month. Um, yeah, I do social media influencing. It's been great. Uh, I I started off doing like, I guess, beauty stuff. Yeah, and then yeah. I went into TikTok and then TikTok also started doing beauty stuff. And then at some point I was like, as a Malaysian, I feel like I have to be able to speak Malay. So during COVID time, I was like, okay, I need to find a niche for myself. And oh. I was like, why don't I try speaking Malay? Because I'm so bad at it. And no, two years down the no. road doing it, my Malay has improved like crazy. Now I'm so fluent in really? Malay. Really? Yeah. So it started from TikTok? It started from TikTok. No way. Yeah, I didn't even know Malay. that. Yeah. Well, I was the, 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 the joke was that I would say, Manga draw, Manga fill in. That was, the, that was the, the thing. Yeah. It was just as a joke. And then suddenly I became fluent at it. Yeah. So you, you started your own language. The Nicole language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manga fill in. The dictionary. <laughs> Hello. That's my thing. <laughs> Come and buy my book. I'm going to draw my face. I'm going to draw, I'm going to paint, I'm going to brush. <laughs> but anyway, I think the reason why we got you here today is because we... It's so hard to find someone who's comfortable talking about sex. Yes, it's true. And you obviously came to mind because you're yeah. very, very open. Yeah. Have you always been like this though? I think so. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I look crazy. <laughs> who else would talk about sex other than me? <laughs> So, are you ready to dive right in? Yes, let's do it. I'm okay. really excited. When was your first time? How? Okay. When? Okay. Maybe no need to Th tell me how old. This was dive right in. This was <laughs> yeah. dive right. First time and how was it? I dated when I was well. I had my first boyfriend officially when I was seventeen or eighteen. Okay, no, that's no, fair. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 18 years old. If you old. tell me 13, I'm very panicking. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. But I really loved him. We were together for a really long time. And mm. my whole life, I've only ever had like two sexual partners. So, oh. And they've both been my boyfriends. So um, yeah, it was great. I was 19 and it was a really safe environment. Oh, and wow. I loved him a lot. And he was also like... <sighs> Virgin. So <laughs> we lost it to each other. Thank God. Because I must have been a mess. No idea what I was doing. Uh, so he was lost too. So it was great. I had a really good time. No way. Okay. So how is it like losing your virginity to a virgin? Do you guys both lost souls trying to, you know? Yeah, how, we how were confused. It? But were you confused or was it good? You know, I don't know. Because you it don't know nice. what you don't know. Like, I think I felt like I really loved him and he really loved me. And again, the relationship lasted for like five years plus. Wow. So... I felt like it was a good... I, I, I'm very happy that my younger self was so gila and wanted to just lose it to anybody. Like I waited for the right person to come along. It's so good. Yeah, it was really cute. Honestly, we were kind of struggling. <laughs> Not gonna lie, we were on a struggle bus. Like, but uh, yeah, we got it after a while. We understood. Uh, yeah, it took a couple of times for us to get used to it. Was it funny at some point? Yeah, for sure. We were laughing. <laughs> Like, are you in? Am I in? Are we yeah. in? <laughs> are we in it right now? Is uh, do you happening? feel it? <laughs> yeah. So. So sometimes they put into the wrong hole, you know, and they don't know. <laughs> they better know because I will be yelling, okay? Yeah, I will be exactly. Screaming. Like, wrong hole! <laughs> Ow! Change! Then you kind of adjust it for them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they, it's quite close to each other. You yeah, see it's the true, holes it's true, for it's true. women. Yes, so. and when you give birth, I hear that it tears sometimes. Yeah, All my, the way my down. cousin, Kana, apparently. Ah. But because during birth, 
give, when you're giving birth, the pain is already so intense. Yeah, you can't feel so it. So when the doctor cut or it tears, you actually don't really feel it right, anymore. But right. the after, right. when you want to pee, <gasps> holy smokes, I don't even want to think about what it. What happens if you want to poop? I don't know. We'll ask the doctor later. Guys. We'll ask the doctor later. Yeah, so I think today's episode is a little bit interesting because I'm trying out a different format. Now, I know you guys have seen some of my episodes with, you know, our, our medical experts on and then, and we talk about everything and everything. But today, I want to split it because we're going to go crazy this first half and educate you in the second half. Okay. All right. So did your parents actually give you the birds and bees talk? Yes, my parents did. I think I was like 12 or 13. Okay. And my mom sat me down uh, to talk to me about it. Um, and she had a little book with illustrations on it. What? Yeah, so she was explaining to me how it works. And then I remember very clearly asking my mom, did you do this with that? <laughs> and then my mom and my, my, my mom burst out laughing. And I remember feeling so embarrassed because she was laughing at me. And that's why it like seared into my memory that my mom had this talk with me. Oh, wow. But yeah, but she how did old have were you? I think I was 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, that- it was great. She's great. I like love my mom because she's really open about these things. Yeah. Or that she understands that it's better to keep your children safe. Yeah. Than to just say that like, oh, you close both eyes and you don't bother. And then you don't, you don't have control over what your kids do. So I feel like my mom really cared about the safety. So yeah, I appreciated that about it. I am the complete opposite. <laughs> really? Like my mom never talked to me about it. Uh, but obviously when she found out I had a boyfriend in high school, all she said was, ah, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you She's trying to like passive aggressive. Yeah. And I yeah. didn't really get it because at the time I haven't even had sex yet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what does she mean? Why cannot, cannot study if I have a boyfriend? <laughs> like what? So she was kind of like going in a merry-go-round. Yeah. Not really being, being direct. Honest, yeah. Not direct at all. And yeah. I had to figure it out myself. Yeah. Now that, you know, thinking back, I'm like, I think she tried really hard. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was her, it was the best way that she knew how she to knew, speak to like, I mean, I don't it. blame her because yeah. I feel like the parents in that generation really I think your mom is really one of the very few like open-minded open-minded people. ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've talked to me about your mom before, so my mom is like, like I said, complete opposites. And I wonder how, how then for those of us like me who never really had the birds and bees talk, we had it quite hard. Let me just have to yeah, say, my right. first time was not pleasant. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, let's just put it this way: it was painful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm comfortable going into details because that's going to be a whole other episode. But like my first time left left me a lot of trauma. Mm. Yeah. So I had to kind of like go through a diff- a few more rounds of that to kind of overcome that. Right. Because it made me feel like I'm so dirty and cheap. Which right. is not supposed to be the way because I hear your story and I'm like... yeah. Supposed to be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, you, exactly. You are making love with someone that you love. But was it physically traumatic or physically emotionally traumatic. traumatic? It was physically traumatic. Physically traumatic. Right, right. Yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. created like emotional trauma Correct. for you. Right. And I don't think I am ready to even share this story publicly just yet. Mm-hmm. But all I can say was my first time was physically traumatic, right. unfortunately. Right. I right. mean, I am still going through it now, working on it with my therapist, because you know how it trickles down to every part of your yeah. life later on in yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, but my my sexual experience in the first few years, like the first few years after I'm not virgin anymore, yeah. was not great, right. to be very honest. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I think oh. it's really different for everyone. So it's nice to hear that you had such a good time. Yeah, yeah. I have mm. great stories. Very happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Because my next question is like, your worst sex encounter, then have you had bad sex before? <laughs> Only the kind that like, I feel like, mm, I'm not into this. I'm not enjoying myself. It's kind of boring. Huh? <laughs> Does that count as bad sex? <laughs> she's so lucky. She's <laughs> never had bad sex. What the hell? Okay, I've had uh, bad sex. How do we describe bad yeah, sex? Yeah, so it depends on your definition of what bad sex bad means. Bad sex is like, leave, left you feeling, it will leave you feeling like, the heck? Mm. That's it. I think I don't have that kind of experiences because I've only ever had sex with my boyfriends. Right. So they're always in a loving setting. If anything, it's just like I'm not feeling what's happening right now, mm. or uh, it's kind of kind of boring. So it's more like these kind of things as opposed Sad. to it being traumatic or 
affecting me in a certain way. Okay. Yeah. But then if that's the case, then I'll ask you this question. What's your definition of good sex since you've had hmm. such a great experience? Maybe we can talk about that instead. I think you have to be emotionally connected. And I think as women, it's hard to... I, I don't really believe in one night stands, but it's not that I judge people for doing it, of course. But for me personally, I feel like if I don't have an emotional connection with somebody, uh, it's very hard for it to be good. Mm. And it's like, I will imagine that if I didn't have a good emotional connection to this person. Okay, first of all, I'm a high value woman. <laughs> I'm not going to just let anybody swipe my pepe card, okay? That's not going to be it, you know? How high value you have to be. And for you to be a high value person that I admire and I look up to and I respect, I have to have an emotional connection with you. And, so yeah. if you're just good looking and I sleep with you for the night and then the next day you don't treat me properly and you just kind of leave me, it's like I devalue myself. It has nothing yeah. to do with the other guy. So to me, having good sex means having a deep emotional connection mm. and also to not be judged for whatever it is that you want to do. If mm. you want to take it all the way and your partner is like, yes, manning to you, as mm. long as the whole thing, of course, is consensual. Yeah. Um, and you have a good time and mm. you end up feeling full yeah. from the sexual experience yeah. as opposed to feeling empty. I feel like that's a good sexual experience to have. Ooh. Yeah. I love what you said. High value woman cannot yeah. simply swipe my pepe. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You exactly. let anybody muscle is a long tongue, you know. Cannot. It's not like cannot like that. I wish my, my younger self knew that right. because the traumatic experience left mm. me feeling so dirty. Yeah. Cheap. Yeah. yeah. So then I devalued myself right. from that experience. Yeah. 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 But of course, it's no longer that way, lah. Yeah. Like now, yeah. today, I also very super high value. Yes, of course. Whoever want to swipe my pepe, <laughs> come on, please queue up. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I will only allow you if I think you are valuable yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, but sometimes it's so sad. I, I'm so sure there are a lot of women or or men or boys out there who don't feel what you felt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's like, I think my experience of my mom being open mm. and then only having done it with people that I loved. I, and I, again, I was together with this guy for like more than five years. So yeah. it's like, I never, he protected me from all kinds of traumatic sexual experiences yeah. that I had between 19 to 24 yeah. that I developed. Like he was such an important person in those yeah. formative young adult years that by the time I came out when I was 25, I knew by that point, it was like, even if I was swiping on Tinder, I was not going to sleep around at that point yeah. because I had such a great connection with him mm -hmm. and I've learned to value who I was as a person. So he protected me from a lot of things that I could have been traumatized from. And I'm very lucky that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm. I think it makes such a big difference, especially like you said, the formative years of us being a woman. Yeah. yeah. Having sex. Yeah. And those kind of experiences stay with you. Yes. Your yes, first yes. time, especially. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. When I'm ready one day, I will share about my first time uh, because that, that, that requires a whole episode yeah. to talk about it. But I want to just tell you that yeah. I feel like doing this podcast is really important for an experience like yours. Yes. It's like to let other young women or young people understand mm -hmm. why sex is not something to just throw around and it's not yeah. something to just do because other people are doing it. Mm -hmm. So you're making a, yeah. a difference by having a podcast like this. So I just wanted to- Thank you. Yeah. Like, honestly, I mean, that's why I kind of have conversations like this for my younger self because I never had that voice for mm. myself. It's like healing your inner child in some Somewhat way. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do the podcast for myself, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's so important, like- the truth is growing up, okay, let me just put it this way. If your mom didn't have that conversation with you, who else did you have that conversation with? Nobody. Exactly. Yeah, no one. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't blame my mom for it. I yeah. don't think she had a conversation with her, her mom too yeah. Yeah. and or her friends. They, I've never heard my mom talk about sex before. Yeah. Even now as a single, single woman, like for me to ask her mom, don't you feel like having sex? Like, I, I don't think I can bring myself up to to, yeah. to, to, to even ask her that. Right, right. Even as an adult right. now, right. I never had a conversation with my mom about mm, it on mm, sex. Mm, mm, do you do you talk to your mom all, about all the it? Time, all now? the time. Now? Yeah. Now? Really? Yeah, like what? Yeah. You tell her mom I had a... <laughs> so let's just say like, uh, if I'm being like really transparent, sometimes like uh, with my current partner, we go through bouts of like arguing uh -huh. where the argument results in us having a lot less sex than usual. Right. And then I would talk to my mom about it. And my mom would tell me that sex is the number one red flag detector of when a, when a marriage is going wrong. So every couple that's about to get divorced, nobody is having sex, you know? So it's, it's, it comes hand in hand. Mm. So my mom was the one who told me that if you're having like issues with sex in your relationship, 
you have to flag it. It's not something to take, um, yeah, so, uh, not not something to take so lightly. Yeah. Because I think your body can't lie when you want to have a connection with somebody. Your body can't lie. Your body can't be attracted to somebody that mm. you're upset with or mm. you're arguing with. Yeah. And over a prolong prolonged period of time, let's just say if it's like three to six months where you guys don't, you're not sexually active as a couple, mm. there is something really wrong emotionally in your relationship that needs Addressing. Yeah, it needs addressing, you know. So I'm happy. I, I, I cannot even begin to explain how grateful I am that my mom is open to talking to me about these things because she has the, uh, like a whole vast wealth of experience because she's already 60 years old. And the mm. fact that she's honest with me about these things, I'm sure all her married friend goes through this. And yeah. she's trying to tell me these things so I don't make the same mistakes as her. You know what I mean? They go through it and they learn the hard yeah. way. Yeah. And being able to have these open conversations with my mom have been like absolutely amazing for me. Shout so, out, auntie. Shout out, mommy. I love you. <laughs> this camera also, mommy, I love you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I understand that you've only had sex with two important people in your lives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have had more. Yeah. Um, not too many, but more than her. And... I guess you've never really experienced sex where it just feels like, oh, meh, what? I feel like a log, like mm. the guy is just moving mm. and I'm just like, when is he going to be done? When mm. is he going to be done? I've had that before. Right, right. Which right. is why for me, having sex now, I don't like to say having sex. Right. I like to say making love. Yeah. Because I have experienced that making love process where you're so like you said yeah connected so in tune yeah. so connected your body just knows what to do and the other person as well and I have, when I finally experienced that I'm like damn mm. this is what it is mm, mm, mm. so if you're listening to this and you're still having sex that's just not satisfying or you just have never felt what Nicole said I think <sighs> I don't want to say keep searching. That does not mean sleeping sleeping around, but take your time. Yeah. Because I don't think it happened overnight for you. Even with the same partner, it took some time to yeah, get that. Yeah, of right? course, of course. Yeah. Uh, but of course you had that safe space to do that. Yes, Having that course. safe space environment, I feel so, so important, which I feel like not a lot of people, unfortunately, got to experience. Mm, I mean, I think the thing about sex is you need to understand what your purpose is, you know? <laughs> And for a lot of women, again, I think it's very hard to detach the emotions from the sex. I think guys, sometimes they can do that because I hear that when it comes to cheating, women uh, prefer physical cheating over emotional cheating and men prefer emotional cheating over physical cheating, actually. Mm. So I would rather my partner sleep with somebody random if he were to cheat on me rather than form an emotional bond with somebody. Right. But when I asked my, like most of my guy friends, they would tell me, no, they prefer um, physically cheating. Yeah. As opposed, oh uh, no, they would prefer an emotional, emotional bond cheating. as opposed to physically cheating. So I, somehow I feel like women are just a little bit more emotionally bonded when it comes to sex. So you need to first be aware what, are you looking for when you're trying to have sex with somebody? Mm. You know, okay, you feel a, a attraction or you feel some kind of connection with this person. Mm. Is this person going to give you that same feeling back? Or are they just looking to just have a one night stand and yeah. not have an emotional connection? Because if you want to do that, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. I think as long as your purpose for why you want to do it is clear, then you can do whatever you want. But yeah. I think a lot of girls mistake that feeling mm. for em an emotional connection. That's what they're trying to get with sex. So you can leave... Um, a sexual experience feeling very empty because you don't yes. get, yeah, your emotions are not fulfilled by the experience. Yes. And then, of course, you feel empty or dirty or I yeah. shouldn't have done this or some kind of regret. Yes, like yeah. you regretted that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I find that you just need to be very clear about why you want to do it, who you're doing it with yes. and whether that person can meet you there. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, you have to kind of be like, okay, if I want to get off, then I'm just going to do it. And I got to lower my expectations of what this experience is going to be like. Yeah. So then I think that way it's, it's actually about reinforcing your own safety and mm -hmm. keeping yourself safe, not just physically, but emotionally safe yeah. and protect yourself from an experience yeah. like that. Yeah. Because having said that, like if you want to have a fuck buddy, if you guys don't know what that means, fubu, like fuck buddy, um, like it, it makes sense. At the end of the day, I think most of the women, like women, I know, end up being emotionally invested. Yeah. Because sex is just emotional. I, I feel There's so much more. Than to me, okay, this is like bro sciencing it a little bit. Okay, tell but me. But guys put the thing inside you. But somebody enters your body. 
my you God. know, it makes a huge difference that some someone is inside of me as opposed to me just putting something like if I put my fingers inside somebody else, you know, it just doesn't feel the same, you know. Yeah. So I'm allowing someone to enter me. It's a very vulnerable feeling, a vulnerable position to be in, and mm. I feel like this person needs to make me feel safe. Mm. and emotionally safe to be able to do this or else yeah you gotta be wary of who you're allowed to enter your palace gates <laughs> <laughs> ladies please take note yes. zip it up right now for yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. gonna wait for your prince charm yes okay yes, yes. okay speaking of sex you know according to this report from new Street times one third which is pretty much 33 percent of teenagers mm. malaysian teens are having sex before reaching the age of 14 I know. I was shocked when I saw the numbers. And guess how many teenagers that is? 33% means 51,000. 51,000. Huh? Is that 50? Is this 51,000? No. No, it's 513,000. The comma is at the wrong place. The comma wrong place. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Comma wrong place. 513,036 teens in Malaysia as of 2022. Why COVID also still can have sex? How? (laughs) (laughs) So what's more jarring is 88% of sexually active adults admitted to not utilizing any form of birth control or Mm. condoms. So yes, sex is fun. Sex is great. Sex is wonderful. But if you don't want to be pregnant, you got to do something about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So do you have protection when you have sex? Yes, of course. All the time? All the time. Since day one? Since day one. Really? I don't play girl yeah and so okay I, I was just gonna i was telling maggie like right before i started the show i had a really funny story about my mom yes so i was in london yeah. and my mom knew at that point when i was studying there because my partner was also there with me she was like okay this girl confirm gone already okay gone. about to lose the bees. yeah so she had the talk with me about the birds and the bees when i was 12 but since then we've not really talked about anything you right. know it's so just she been- Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just theory, you know. So I haven't spoke to her about it. So when I got to London, it was like maybe a couple of months in. So my mom got on like uh, Skype with me at that point. And she was like, yeah, damn all right. I'm an old lady, okay. Uh, but yeah, she got onto Skype with me. And then she was asking me like, um, are you guys safe? So I, I could tell that she was trying to initiate a conversation, but it was a bit tough for her, right? Because right. she doesn't know. So at that point, I had done all my research. Because I had the internet, like, right? So I researched everything. They had an NHS, which does yeah. gives out free birth control in the UK. So Ooh. I was going to take it because uh, what I was reading, what I was seeing from the doctor was that the doctor was telling me if there was a long-term partner, it could be, you could choose between either having condoms or birth control. But mm-hmm. if you have a long-term partner, you could consider birth control. And then to me, I was like, okay, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. And then there were like a, a couple of benefits that she was telling about my skin or regulating the periods. And regulating my emotions because I get a bit cuckoo when I'm yeah. like PMSing. Yeah. <laughs> so I did all my research. I went to get the birth controls for NHS. I read up about the brand. So I told my mom everything because I was like, you know what? My mom just wants me to be safe. I okay. can hear in her voice that she's just concerned. Yeah. And I'm like, why don't I just tell her the truth? Okay. So I told her everything uh, that I, was, I had done. And then she kept quiet on the phone for like maybe a couple of seconds. And then she said, wow, I think uh, you are more safe than me and that. <laughs> But then I told her I have the internet. Yeah. I have to. And yeah. It's almost like a no-brainer. I have to be, I have to do my research. Even mm. if I can't talk to anybody, the internet's like not gonna judge me for whatever I search, you know? Yeah. So that was how I like got into my birth control. I had the right. yeah, I had free birth control in the UK. So Hey, that's amazing. Mm. We don't get that here, do we? No, no, no. And they give you free condoms there. They have a whole tray <gasps> at the women's clinic. So you can just just they- grab whatever you want just take everything yeah it's all free in can, the UK. can we can we file for petition to have that here in malaysia <laughs> or at least clang valley i don't mind yeah 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 oh wow okay um so you use both condoms and birth control i used to use condoms Only? and then i transitioned okay. in the in the uk to using birth control and then ever since then i've been on and off it depending i mean i um after my relationship ended with my previous ex-boyfriend i had mm-hmm. like a, maybe a couple of I mean, a half a year gap so yeah. i didn't use it in that period yes. Then I came back on it again with my new right. partner. Mm. You know what's funny? I personally had a very misconception about birth control. I used to think that condom, 
probably is the only option because birth control is for people who don't want to get pregnant. In a sense where like, if I take it, I, I cannot be pregnant forever. Ah, I right. just had this stupid misconception like, oh, once I have it, I'm going to have trouble conceiving later, but I want baby in the future so I will not take birth control mm-hmm. until I had to take it. Right. Uh, so I had my um, ovarian cyst surgery yes. about three years now, three years ago, 2020. And after surgery, my doctor actually prescribed me birth control. Oh. And I thought, oh my God, no, I don't want... <laughs> then I, I get pregnant. Yeah, Lita, I cannot get pregnant. Oh, you absolutely can, my dear. Yeah. Um, this is just temporary. The moment you plan to have baby, just stop, stop taking yeah. it and you'll be just fine. Yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah, I hear it takes like three months yeah. for it to get back to normal. Exactly. But we'll ask the doctor. We can ask the we doctor ask later. The doctor. Okay. Um, yeah, so I had such misconception about it right but of course before 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 that I kind of already knew but like I was still very hesitant but the yeah. surgery was really my very first time ever mm. consuming birth control mm. because I had to at the time right mm. and I quite like it <laughs> same <laughs> so what's your experience with birth control because we hear good and bad stories yeah. side effects is part of it but like yeah. what, what what was your experience like so my period flows used to be really heavy uh-huh. and they would last for maybe a week long yeah but ever since i've been on it's a lot more regulated oh, so yes. it's maybe three to four days that my the... flow is like a little bit less yeah um a lot more controllable i would say <laughs> <laughs> um and i would my pms is crazy yeah it's like how bad absolutely insane like i would try to close the fridge door and let's say the fridge door never close <laughs> angry at the fridge door or my mom would call me from downstairs and I'll be like what and then she would just Say be something. quiet and then I'll be like what what I would get so <laughs> ridiculously pissed right but you know it's PMS right? but I only knew it's PMS because I would check my birth control pills and I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh I see yeah so my PMSs were a lot more easily regulated my own emotional mm. like because it, it what, what I, I know about PMS is that it's not that you are just suddenly crazy and you're doing things you, you don't usually do. You're mm-hmm. just, the thing that you're annoyed about, it's just, you're <laughs> even more annoyed. It's so amplified. Yeah, it's amplified. Yeah, so I realized that with the PMS, like being able to track it, I can recognize that, oh, right. I'm, I'm actually having my PMS and then I can regulate my emotions a lot better because I will throw my temper at my boyfriend. Okay. And it's over stupid things. Huh? <laughs> I just like, <laughs> far peachy lah, you know? But then what, he will be like, oh, I think you're PMSing. And I'm like, wake up, then Hey, sorry. I have a question. Yeah. So if you take birth control, do you still come inside? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, really you safe, can. Yeah, not- yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. It's totally safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. it's not totally safe, but... So far, not touch wood. Yeah, touch wood. <laughs> so far, be okay. <laughs> la. That's what I just want to know because yes, yes. I I tell you guys, I think you're safe, but I also them safe one, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I mean, uh, I had a long-term relationship and... We've never not have condom, mm. right? Mm. And uh, even when I was on birth control, I still wear condom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we need to ask later whether that actually gives you double protection or not. <laughs> or are you wasting your money? I, I know, know, I know, I know. I'm just wasting my money. But I think it's more in my head that yes, yes. No, uh, what if leak? Uh, leak? I don't want pregnant now. Yeah, uh, how? Yeah, uh, yeah, I just yeah, wear yeah. condom there and double protection and double satisfaction. Mm. Hey, not double satisfaction. Um, just double protection. Double protection. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But men hates wearing condom. Yeah, I actually feel do you, it's, do you get that with your Sometimes I feel the friction is a bit painful for really? me. If it gets too dry or something, sometimes it can just cause a bit of irritation, which I don't feel like it's comfortable. Yeah, sometimes yeah. when the condom gets dry, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Then yeah. you just juice yourself up and then it'll be fine. Yeah, right? yeah. And then it gets sometimes it gets loose and then like you okay. know you like take it in, take it out, and then it's got like a weird smell or Bro, whatever. there's one time condom leaked. Oh and I wasn't on birth control. Mm, mm, and I'm just like Holy shit. Mm. What do I do? Right. You know what I did? Morning after pill. Right. Yeah. Have you done it before? Yeah, yeah. I have when I was... was fucking... Yeah. I swear. (laughs) Okay, I can swear. I freaking hate it. Yeah. Because it was so bad for me. It induces your period if I'm not mistaken. Something like that. Again, we'll ask the doctor. doctor. But this is my personal experience. Like, obviously when there's emergency situations, because I'm not on birth control, the next day... Actually, if I can, I'll usually have it in midnight and I don't lazy go out. I'll just wait in the morning and go and buy. Because mm. apparently you can have it within as long as it's within 72, 72 hours, yeah. right? So if you have sex and you realize something is wrong, you don't want to get pregnant, yeah. go get your pills. 
because we sort one thing at a time, okay? Yeah, yeah. The side effects, I'll deal with it later. So I know that I tend to get really bad side effects from morning after pill. Mm, like mm-hmm. really, really bad. I just feel like my cramps are intense. Yeah, yeah. And I know because of the pill. And yeah. my PMS is not PMS, it's SMP or something <laughs> like that. It's damn bad. Like I go batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'll just cry for no reason. I look at the car there, I also cry. It, I don't know why. It's crazy how the, a woman's hormone is just... Yeah, because it, it definitely affects your hormones, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't I, know what hormone, yeah? We'll ask the doctor we'll later. Ask the doctor. This yeah. will be the meme, you know? Like, at ask the end of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, and a lot of cases. So I, I was just saying that I was doing... Uh, well, I did a live during COVID about birth control. Yeah. And I find out that a lot of people take um, the emergency pill every time after they have sex. Bro. Yeah. Because they don't use condoms. <gasps> Let's just say with more conservative families where they are a bit afraid of their parents finding out that they have condoms or uh-huh. they're using birth control. Every time after sex, they would take an emergency. Did they say pill. what kind of... How is it like for them? Um, I don't. I, I don't know. But it's. I feel like it's not. You're not supposed to do that. No. So I you think- are. You hundred percent should not be doing this. It's an emergency pill for a reason because it really, really affects your hormones. And I don't think you I should think do it within. Wise. Yeah, it's really, really bad for your body. You know, because this is like last worst case scenario. Yeah. If something happens and you feel like you are unsafe, then you take it. But yeah. every other scenario, you have to be safe about it. Yeah. So. I feel like women, uh, because the responsibility of bearing children is on the women yes. and yeah, life is unfair. Unfortunately, we have to be the ones who are Correct. responsible about it. But these kind of conversations are so important because there's yeah. not enough education about these things. Yeah. They mistaken emergency pills for birth control pills or yes. they think that it's a it's replacement for condoms. Yes. Yeah, when it's actually not the case, you know. Right. Yeah. I think that's why I think having this conversation alone is, is important. And sadly, I really don't hear much. Yeah. And you know what? I think it's time to just get the doctor on because I feel like a lot of us, the doctor, yes, it's we'll happening. just bring her on and yes. we ask her all the questions. Let's okay? do it. All I'm right, so you guys. Excited. I got a lot of questions also. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we've heard from Nicole and some of our first time experiences. Right now, it's time to speak to the expert. We have Dr. Lo, um, ONG consultant from Sunway Specialist Center, Damansara. With us right now. Hi, Dr. Lo. Hi, hi. So hi, you heard Dr. everything Lo. you said? I have. And I just want to say very well done, ladies, on opening about your sexual experiences. Mm-hmm. I think we need to have this conversation about sex more often. Yeah, I think it's not that we don't want to have. Sometimes yes. we don't know who to talk to. Yeah, yeah, true. Like who's comfortable? Like even for me to get someone as comfortable as Nicole to come on to, to even mention and talk about sex, a personal life, it's not easy. Mm. Uh, a lot mm. of people will say no to it. They're not comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, of yeah. yeah. Do you have this sort of conversations with your patient? I'm curious. Or is it just to come in, treat me and I'm out of the door? Actually, I think I'm very open-minded in general and I have, I believe in not judging my patients. And I think most doctors don't judge your, their patients regardless of what, you know, we feel as patients, you know, sometimes. Um, so I'm very open. And majority of the time, once my patients open up to me, the floodgates open, and they do talk about a lot of things about sex, Mm. about difficulties that they have with sex, about concerns. Mm. And I do believe that there's no such thing as a silly question. So patients will ask me everything and Mm. I, and I do answer them. And what are your thoughts on sex being dirty? That, that. It's really sad that, um, that in Asia, particularly, I think we've all been taught from a young age that sex is dirty. The fact that, you know, we we call them private parts and, you know, we are always told that that area is dirty. I think all this filters down later. So I think this is actually one of the reasons why a lot of people have difficulties with sex, actually. They feel dirty after sex and that also can lead to difficulties in the bedroom, I personally feel. Yeah. So I think we need to open about, up about it and tell people that, yeah, sex is important. It's what creates life. Yeah. And of course, I think the reason why we got you here is because we talked about birth control and every time we want to say something technical, we go, ask the doctor. Because <laughs> I don't want to give the wrong information, especially if this episode is going to supposed to bring value and educate people. Yeah. I can share my personal experience. We shared our experiences. Yes. So now it's time for us to ask you a question. Okay. Um, okay, doctor. So what actually is birth control? Because Nicole was saying, you know, a lot of people uh, assume that morning after pill is works yeah. the same as birth control. And how do they work? Okay. So basically our ovaries uh, do two jobs. They produce hormones and they produce eggs. So all this is controlled by the brain. So what we do with birth control is we give you small amounts of these hormones just to fool your brain, 
to tell your brain, okay, like the hormone got enough ready. So your brain stops sending the signal down to your ovaries. Mm. Therefore, you stop producing the hormones and you stop producing eggs. That's why you don't get pregnant. Yeah, it's like we're fooling the brain. Right. Is that why my doctor prescribed me with birth control? Because when I have my had my ovarian cyst was because of my yes. eggs. So if I have no eggs, yes. then no cyst. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that's why we keep the ovaries quiet. Um, and that's how they work. So the good thing about the birth control pill is that it's more, it, it prevents ovulation. So it's much more reliable at preventing uh, pregnancy. Uh, however, the uh, emergency contraception is great. I mean, I think- you Morning know, after pill? Yeah, the morning okay. after pill, that obviously is great because accidents happen, you know, condoms yes. split. Sometimes, you know, they don't, the, the shops are closed. You can't get to, <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Uh, or you forgot your birth control pills. I think that it's great, but the thing is, you, you it shouldn't be used regularly because it's high levels of one of the hormones that are inside the pill. Okay. And it may delay ovulation. So if you take it before you've released the egg, that's great. But once you've released the egg already, it, or you've just going to release the egg, it might not have an effect. So it's not 100%. Mm. Oh, Yes. Oh, yeah. So it just delays. It just basically slows. It just basically slows the release of the egg. So mm. that means if I have sex today mm -hmm. and my egg's already out, yes, then and the birth I, con that is not the emergency contraception. So I can yeah, still get pregnant help. even yes. though I've taken the morning after pills. Mm. Yeah, because so the egg can lasts twenty four hours. Yeah. Then what can we do? So what you can do is obviously there are alternatives as well. Um, obviously it depends as well. I mean, we would advise obviously you take the, the, um, the, the, the emergency contraception or the morning after pill. There are two types uh, out there. Some that you can take after up to 72 hours, yeah. some up to five days. Mm. And the other option is also that they can put a copper coil in. But obviously if you're in doubt, it's best to talk to your gynecologist about it. Yeah, but it's quite scary. It's it's. I think it most of the time it works, but um, if you're using it regularly as birth control, then it may not be the best idea. Mm. Can it? What's the word? Can your body be so immune to it that it no longer works? It, you don't. Your body doesn't get immune to it. Ah. But uh, I do have patients where they have got sort of irregular periods later, yes. or they don't get a period later, and that causes even more stress. Mm. Um, so and it, we're talking about morning after yeah, pill. Yeah, the morning okay, after okay. pill. It can cause sort of, it can play havoc a little bit because it's high levels of a certain hormone. Right. Yeah. What's that hormone? Uh, progesterone. Progesterone. Yeah, most of it contains progesterone. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what's the function of progesterone again, if you don't mind okay, breaking so it Okay, so progesterone does a few things. So this is the hormone that maintains the lining inside. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, it, it is the maintainer, you know, the one that maintains the lining. So the reason why some pills we give to, you know, we've got two types of pills, one where they only contain progesterone and one where they contain both progesterone and estrogen. The reason being is because if you just give estrogen, the lining inside gets very thick. So you'd need this to sort of balance it out. Mm. Progesterone also works by making the mucus um, at your, you know, at the entrance of the uterus more hostile to the sperm. It's already quite hostile, <laughs> makes it more hostile. <laughs> and because it keeps the lining inside thin, um, it also means that if even if accidentally you release an egg by right, the egg shouldn't implant into your uterus. At what point of our menstrual cycle that we have the highest level of progesterone? Progesterone will probably I, be higher towards the end of your period. End of our yeah. period. Yeah, yeah, no, end of, no, it's the end of your cycle. End of my yeah. cycle, meaning so just before middle. I get period. So after you've released the egg, yeah. that's when it's highest. So that's also the reason why you get your ovulate PMS la. symptoms. After we ovulate mm. is the after highest. After you ovulate, mm. yeah. Before period. Yes. So that's why you get the PMS symptoms. So that hormone is the one that causes all the PMS symptoms. Ah. Uh, the cravings. The angry at the fridge. Hey, the angry at the fridge. Yeah, I can eat two lunches. <laughs> eh. I can like literally eat chi chong fai and then eat chakui tiao after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Actually, I can't I eat a lot finish. Too. Yeah, I can't finish my food. Like my boyfriend, I'll like step on his food and he'll and I'll dump all my food into his mouth. <laughs> you think it's DPKL? Yeah. yeah, it's always like that. But wow, well, I can eat two lunches at one go. Yeah, it's also another it's, sign. It's, it's progesterone. Mm. Tell me if this is a myth or the a truth. Uh, the truth. Uh, Women, when you're having period, we burn more calories. Don't think that's true. I, uh, uh, unfortunately, I wish. <laughs> I have a question, a yeah. mythy kind of question. Yeah. Um, I hear that you should sex. Uh, you should sex. You should <laughs> pee after having sex. Oh, yes. So, uh, what, what's the logic okay. behind so that? So, what happens with sex is there's, you know, there's a lot of bacteria 
bacteria that lives within our vagina, within the, the anus area as well. So there's lots of bacteria there. And what happens is that sometimes with sex, you can push all this bacteria upwards towards where you pee. So if, that will cause infections. Yeah, so if, this, if these bacteria somehow travels upwards to your bladder, then you UTI. have a... Yes, that's why women... So when, when women come in with urine infections, we tell them, after you have sex, best to just go and have a pee. So you just push out the bacteria so that none of it stays up there. Mm. So, okay, does washing makes a difference or peeing makes the most difference? Peeing is the best. La. Yeah. Why? Eh? Because whatever has been pushed in, you kind of just flush it out when ah. you pass urine. Because your urine is supposed to have no bacteria at all. Right. Oh, yeah. that's so hey, all cool. these angmo, they have sex, then they sleep, they never wash one. You know? Yeah, oh. that one. Huh? I, right. I cannot you wait. Watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I heard about the peeing thing and I didn't oh. verify anything, but ever since I heard it and I, again, I don't know what's the sauce, I oh. pee. I would just yeah. sit there and I would try my best to pee. I always yeah. can pee. In fact, I it's, it's my ritual. After sex, mm-hmm. definitely pee because yeah. I got UTI before. Yeah, and for the same reason the doctor told me the same thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never really understood what she mean by. She just told me just pee because if not you get infection and this will happen again. Yeah, but they now, don't explain. Yeah, so now that you kind of explained it, so the bacteria gets pushed there up up towards the the tube that you know um you know for the urine, oh. and so all you want to do is just flush it out just right. to make sure that it's not there, right. and it inc- it reduces your risk of urine infection. I, right. My other question is. A lot of people are scared to go to gynecologists, right? And it's like, oh, I have just like maybe an itch or I have like a little bit of yeast infection where my discharge is coming out a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. At what point do you feel like okay, is a good time to go? So I, I understand why people don't want to see a gynecologist because it's... I, I personally, I never like seeing a gynecologist. But you are one yeah, yourself. I know, I'm one myself, <laughs> I know. But you know, when before I became a doctor, I have to admit, going to the doctors, having to take off your trousers, mm. and then, you know, it's a very vulnerable position. Mm. Um, and, you know, and there has to be a lot of trust with you and your gynecologist that you have to have that relationship, I think. And until you've found someone that you kind of click with, yeah. sometimes you don't really, you would rather avoid it if possible. Mm. I think that's fine. Majority of the time, if you do have any issues, um, a lot of my patients, they end up going to the pharmacies uh, first to seek some advice and get some over-the-counter treatments. And if those don't work, then I think you should go and see somebody. Mm. But, you know, I always tell my patients that what's right for for one person may not be right for another. So if you find a gynecologist that you haven't really clicked with, then just, you know, just find one that that speaks your language, Mm. you know. So I think that's important. Oh my gosh, we have so many questions. Um, <laughs> it's just a Q&A already, this part. Yeah. Um, I'm so sure people have experienced this before. Painful sex. Yeah. Why sometimes sex can be painful? I mean, I've experienced great sex, but sometimes it can get painful. So painful can be due to a lot of reasons. Yeah. One, it could be um, it could be dryness down below because if you've not had enough foreplay and you don't have enough lubricant down there... Mm. It's it's very difficult. So you, would you would you say foreplay is very important? Yes, I think that that's underrated. Honestly speaking, yes, I think foreplay right. is very important. And <gasps> and I think that remember that women um, remember that women actually our brain is the most sexual organ. Okay, so everything comes from the brain. If there is a barrier from your brain, it actually translates downwards. Mm. So remember, when you're not in the mood, sometimes no matter what your partner does, it's not going to happen. Actually, right? It's yeah, true. It's, it's true. true. It's true. When you're not in the mood and you're tired or you're thinking about your project yes. or you're thinking about something else, it's not going to happen. Yeah. No matter how good what's happening down there, exactly. it's just not. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I remember. remember I remember an experience where I was with my current partner and uh, I was worried he would get bored. <laughs> and then what do you mean and then it resulted in me not being able to get a climax because yeah. I'm too concerned about whether yeah. or not he's having fun right yeah. okay, during the process yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. so it's yeah. like uh, yes. yeah it's like it's not just bad sex that makes me not be able to climax yeah. but it's like yeah just sitting overthinking. there overthinking yeah overthinking yeah. just being like oh is he having fun is it is it okay? Is it smelly? Is it? And then it's like, oh, he's trying so hard and I'm just there like overthinking and it's just not going to work, yeah. you know? So I understand what you mean so by brain, the brain thing. The, your, the brain really makes a difference. So number one is dryness down there. Mm. Number two is your brain. So like I said, if if you are worried about pain, if you think it's dirty, then mm. naturally your, your muscles down there will just clamp up ah. when it's time for them to enter. And if anything is forced into that, is uh, into the vagina, it's very painful. Right, right, right. So yeah, it is... It is very complex, but I think that if it's a major issue, 
it's something that needs to sort of be addressed. Now. I think we have to come back to birth control because I think a lot of us love having sex, mm-hmm. but we don't love protection. Yes. We don't love it. Men don't want to wear condoms, so we have to whip, eat the birth control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But having said that, right, um, actually, can should I take birth control even though I'm not having sex often? But I have sex occasionally. Yeah. Mm. So it really depends on you. Okay. Um, every woman is different, and everyone, every woman's contraceptive needs are different. So this is my my. We use birth control for a wide variety of reasons. So we use it to control your periods. We use it to treat PMS. Actually, some women have very bad PMS, mm. and we use it to treat PMS. Some women we use it to manage their skin. So women with very bad acne and stuff, we can help with that. And some women also they have sort of. Um, but because acne and things like excessive hair growth on the face, all this is due to the male hormone testosterone. Mm. So if you've got slightly higher levels, you will have more acne, you will have a slightly a lot more um, hair growth on your face. So sometimes we use the birth control also to control that. Right. Yeah. So we also use that sometimes to, you know, regulate your periods. We can, you know, reduce the heaviness of your periods. So there's so many reasons why we use birth control. Right. So it, that means it's okay if you currently don't have a partner and you're not yeah. really having sex, but you still take your birth control. Of course no it is. side effects. No. Okay. So generally, majority of the women don't have side effects uh, due to the pill. Yeah. Uh, if let's say you're taking the progesterone only pill, which is only one hormone, you do have a bit of irregular bleeding that comes with it. Oh. Because remember, um, progesterone also can cause the PMS symptoms that we all talked about. Yeah. But the progesterone component can, in the combined pill, the one with two hormones, also can cause uh, a lot of symptoms. So some people have breast tenderness, some people have mood swings, some people, you know, feel more hungry, they get more cravings, um, you know. So all this can sort of, you know, sometimes be amplified. Right. Uh, Yeah. Okay. I know you've been taking birth control, like, pretty much your whole life since you started, right? Yeah. Um, Have you experienced any, like, Negative side effects. I know it's been great for you too, but were there any at some any point? I mean, so breast tenderness is a thing. I feel mm. like it's an on and off thing that I feel, but okay. not enough that it deters my right. life, okay. you know? Um, yeah, so far, no no issues hey, with it. That's so good. Yeah, that's and so no good. weight gain. I know sometimes side effects can have yeah result in weight gain for women. Um, It's the opposite for me. When I had it, Um, my I felt like I was the most slender. <laughs> Like, my body was great. My skin, amazing. Yeah, my skin. My PMS was awesome. But, so this is what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I had two rounds of my birth control. I think both is, I'm not sure, there's different doses, is that? Different doses. Oh. Um, So, different preparations have different uh, compositions. So, basically, the uh, hormone levels might be a little bit different. And also the progesterone component might be a little bit different. Right, okay. So, maybe that explains. Because my first round, like I said, amazing skin feel like my best every time like what is pms didn't have it um really my cramps were managed Mm. um and then my like like you said my period flow was also okay so i actually experienced lots of great stuff from it the first round but fortunately the second round not sure what was different i never really asked my doctor i didn't go haven't gone back yet but I had sharp pain in my breast. I'm not talking about tenderness. Like, mm. I understand what that feels yeah. like because I've experienced it before. But I had sharp pain that was quite crippling. Like, you know, because I, I work, my, my line of work, sometimes I have to be in front of the camera. I have to be on stage. There was one time I was on stage hosting. I was like, <gasps> oh my God, I want to die. Oh it was quite yeah. bad. Then why? Why does that happen? It can be one of the side effects. I mean, like I said, you know, this different preparations have different uh, components. Right. So maybe that particular brand of pill was not right for you. Okay. So perhaps, yeah, in those kind of circumstances, I would recommend to maybe change the brand. Right. Or maybe change the composition, maybe reduce one of the hormones, the estrogen component sometimes. It can reduce the symptoms as well. Hmm. But we wouldn't know how to do that. So we Yeah, have so to I think like- you need to speak to either a pharmacist or a doctor hmm. to, oh. you know. Yeah, I remember uh, like prior to this, I was just saying that uh, I changed my pills for one month and I felt like I was in a depression. Yeah. Uh, and I cried for no reason a lot. Yeah. And I just didn't want to go out. And I'm very extroverted as a person. So it was very strange. Like I can feel like a just total 180. Yourself. Yeah, not being myself. So I find that a lot of people, they they are deterred from taking birth control because they don't have a good experience taking the pills. Yeah. Mm. But in my experience, it's like when I found the right one for me, it mm. actually really benefited my life. But yeah, you have to be, you have to shop around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think sometimes some preparations work better for some 
and mm. and some work better for others. So when you say preparation, what do you mean exactly? So preparations means the component of estrogen, how much estrogen there is, uh, then also the type of progesterone. So different types of progesterone. Because each, different types of progesterone. Yes. So it basically means that different types of progesterone means that we derive it from certain hormones. So some we derive it from testosterone, which is the male hormone, oh. some from others. So basically, depending on where we derive it from, you may have certain side effects and mm. sometimes you may have less side effects. Mm. Yeah, because I was puzzled. Like, how come the first round so good and the second round was painful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's unfortunate that you had that, actually. Yeah, it was quite unfortunate because yeah. I was looking forward to another round of goodness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Being and, amazing. And, and like I said, okay, I want to go back to birth control. So remember I said birth control and I had condom as well? Yes. So the double protection... <laughs> does it work? Okay. Does actually, it work? Okay, like, actually um, the pill, birth control pills are very good. They're about 99% yes. um, you know, sense, uh, you know, good at protecting, uh, yes. preventing you from pregnancy, provided you take it properly. Yes. Uh, okay. But um, the condom protects you from sexually transmitted infections. So that's the only one that protects you against sexually transmitted yeah. infections. <laughs> so you haven't been wasting your money. <laughs> so I, I had double protection technically. Yes, you did. You did have double protection. So you were protected against pregnancy and you were protected against sexually transmitted infections. Okay. I've caught something that you said. Only if you're using it correctly. Yeah. So what is not using birth control correctly? <laughs> and what if I miss a day? I forgot. I forgot. I really completely forgot. Okay. So basically, you're supposed to take it roughly the same time every year. So, the, so like again, that misconception that the pill is going to destroy your fertility for life. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's <laughs> no, <me>. no. <laughs> no, actually, the, 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 what happens is when you take the pill, it only lasts in your body for a short period of time. So therefore, the hormones that you get in your body will only last a certain amount of time, which is why you're supposed to take it every day roughly the same time to replenish oh. those hormones. Mm. So if you're taking, if you keep missing it or if you keep taking it very late or you take it more than 12 hours after, then the hormone levels will sort of come up and down, up and down. So therefore, sometimes your body might accidentally release an egg and then you could potentially get pregnant. Mm. Or if you're taking some other medications on top of it. So sometimes oh. um, if you're taking antibiotics or you're taking certain um, certain other tablets, um, like, you know, treatment for other things. So some of these medications can affect how you process this pill. So if you break it down a lot faster, the hormone levels will not stay in your blood. Mm. And sometimes if you take sort of herbal remedies, we don't really know the effect of these herbal remedies because obviously we don't know what the composition is. So sometimes these can also affect your liver and make your liver sort of break down this hormone faster. Ah. So yeah. Well, so that's what I mean by correct yeah. usage. Yeah. yeah. A lot of things. So I never knew I have to take this the same time. Okay. So oh. it's recommended to take this. Recommended same. roughly the same time. Roughly yeah. the same Within time. 12 hours actually. Because there were a few times. Because like I, I'm someone who is not, I won't say not mindful. I can be forgetful. So my first time ever taking birth control, I forgot to take many times, but I, I, the 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 reminder came within the same day. Yeah. So like I forgot, like maybe I'm supposed to take at nine a.m. by three p.m. Oh my god, I haven't taken my pill, so I'll take it then. Then. Yeah. As long as Will it's within it a twelve hour period, it's still okay. Oh, okay, okay, that's okay, fine. Okay, okay. But if let's say you've missed it, let's yeah, say what do I you do? forgot today. You know, you look at your tablet. Oh no, yesterday I forgot. Yeah. You just take two tablets. That means you take the the one yesterday and the one today, and then you just you don't need to take alternative contraception. But if you miss two or more, then you need to go and see a doctor because you do need alternative contraception. Oh, like for that cycle, I have to go yes. immediately. Don't even wait. Yeah, right. for that cycle. If you've missed two or more, then you do need to, you know, basically have protected sex. So then you'll have to use a condom. Ah. And then go and see a doctor and, you know, and obviously, or, or else at least just use contraception. So what uh, after yeah. that. Yeah, my question is that, okay, let's just say you have missed two and then you are not really actively having sex. Yes, that's my question. Then how do you continue on with the pills? Then you just, then basically you just continue as as you would. So would you take yeah. the other two or yes, would you? you? you can. You take the other two and you just continue as normal. Right. So can you, do you take two at one go? Yeah. You can take two at one go. Okay. okay. I think I, for me, I need to be specific because my brain is not braining. <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, I forgot. Today is Friday. Yes. I'm not have, I'm not sexually active at all. Mm -hmm. So on Friday, do I take Friday's pill or do I also just forget about Wednesday, Thursday? I restart from Friday. You can take um, you can take the uh, Thursday, Friday pill. 
Uh-huh. And then you just continue it. Uh, so take three at one go. No, two. two. So the oh, Thursday two. and Friday. So the Wednesday one, don't bother. Mm. Okay, every time it's like, yeah. the rule of thumb is like two, nothing more. Yeah. And then if you're sexually active, so I hear that you should be wearing a condom or have protected sex for the next week if yes, you miss. for one week. Okay. Yes. So oh. just so that the pill sort of has, an, you know, has taken effect already on your mm. body. So while we are talking about birth control, I have this I don't know if it's a stupid question, but I think there's no stupid question. No, so allow isn't. me to ask. <laughs> I want to travel. So I just arrived, but then I realized I forgot my birth control. But like, I'm already halfway through my birth control. Mm-hmm. That's back mm-hmm. home, right? That I left back home. And the particular country, for some reason, don't have the brand that I'm currently using. Okay. Can I just continue on with another brand? You can. You can continue with another brand. That's okay. not a problem. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just continue it. Oh, start a new pack. Yeah, because I'm I'm so sure it it can happen because sometimes yeah. I forget to pack medicine or something. Of course, yeah. I would just start another pack. So, so you start another pack. So let's say I have 15 days left. Then I just, just start, the new pack, I just take 15 you days. You can just take the whole pack. Oh. oh. That you don't have a period during your holiday. Oh. Wow. <laughs> is it advice to do it's, that? It's okay. Actually, okay. So our Asian misconception is, is that your period means that you flush out all the dirty things in your body. <laughs> Uh, it's yes. not actually every time you have a period you're just shedding last month's lining oh. so basically you're lining every month in your uterus it gets it gets prepared it gets nice and thick preparing for pregnancy and when you don't get pregnant our body just says okay we're just going to get a new one so we're just going to shed the old one and so that you can start again mm. so actually it it doesn't cause a problem right? right so it's a myth that it's dirty la. it's yeah. not actually dirty yeah. Yeah. Right. but you're supposed to have period every month you don't have to, oh. actually. Oh. So actually, by right, having a period every month just shows us that you're ovulating every month in, if you're not taking the birth control pill. The reason why we have that pill-free interval, actually, is because women to feel that they need to have a period. Oh. Because I know the implant, you just don't get a period yeah, you at don't. all. And it's fine. Yeah, you totally really? don't get a period. Yeah, the yeah. implant, you sometimes, you know, with the implant, with some of the uh, alter- other types of contraception, you actually sometimes do- hardly get a period if you, if you get a period at all. How does that work? Like, I've got an egg, but I don't get my period. So most of these ways um, that they do, well, well, most of it is, it depends on the type of contraception, but a lot of it deals with the lining a lot of these hormones make the lining so thin that you don't have a period. So it doesn't break down. So you don't clear last month's lining because there was no lining made mm. because of the hormones. Right. I'm braining. <laughs> so it's okay not to have period every yeah. month? Yeah. Have- Actually, one of the ways that we use to treat PMS because PMS is normally the time before your period. Yes. Yeah. So normally what we do is in I'm some women, we, we actually tell you not to take the pill free. That means you, for three months, you just take the, the pill back to back. Ah, 28, Actually, 20, 28. Yeah. My doctor recommended that. Yeah. And I say, cannot doctor, I want my period. Because <laughs> I feel like we're supposed to have it every yeah. month. And if I don't have my period and you're telling me to not have my period for three months, like in my head, it's unhealthy for I the feel body. like it's not healthy. Yeah. Nothing is coming out and later I must have I might have issues conceiving. So it's a myth. It's a myth. (gasps) Actually, um, you don't even have to wait three months, you know. As soon as you stop the pill, the next day, you can, you can, the next month cycle, you can start trying already. I don't want my period anymore. And sometimes you can even get a rebound. Okay. Rebound? (laughs) Because your ovaries are like, (laughs) woohoo! Freedom! (laughs) And then they might get a little bit active and release more than one egg sometimes. Right. So actually, there are some cases where patients um, will sometimes conceive twins right after... Oh my god! Pill. I don't want oh twins. Oh my! I'm already god. only for one. <laughs> but but no. But as soon as you, if you think about oh, it, once wow. you stop the because the hormone levels remains in your blood for just a short time. Right. So after that, once you stop the pill, actually your it'll, fertility it'll, comes right, back. Right, right, right. And I know so many patients who stop the pill and then they get pregnant a month after. Mm. So, it, yeah. So no worries about your fertility. But I've I've got a question. So. We are all very familiar with condoms, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then we've got birth control. Mm-hmm. And then you have the coil or the, the, the copper. Coil? Yes. That what you- is that? The coil is uh, something that we put inside the, the uterus. Uh, it has two, two functions. There are two types. One will actually be toxic to the sperm. So it kills the sperms before they come in. Um, then the other one actually just keeps the lining thin. So that contains a little bit of hormone there. And actually, it's very good for controlling your periods as well. Ah. So, yeah, we've got different types. We've got the injections or the implants. Yeah, the implants. I think that 
It goes in the Never arm. Really. Yeah, it goes yeah. here underneath your arm here. Ah, right, what, what, right. What, how big is it? It's very tiny. It's very thin. It's like a matchstick that we oh. put there and it releases hormones mm. slowly. So that's very good if you plan to keep it for three years. Oh, yeah, so I've that. been I've been thinking of really? doing it. I've been contemplating it since pre-COVID and then COVID happened and I was like, you know what, it's fine. The hospitals are like crazy yeah. right so now. So meaning you won't bother. have your period for three you, years? You will have periods, but sometimes you may have irregular bleeding. But in some patients, they actually stop having a period. Mm. Okay. But it's not a problem actually. If like that, I think, you know, if you can you choose consider. your personality, yeah. you know, condom, yeah. birth control, <laughs> morning after pill and the, I, I think I'm a birth control gal then. You're a birth control gal. Oh, because then gal. it's predictable. Yes. Controllable. Birth control. I like, I, I like to be in control. Yes. I like to have my control. If you say like, I'm going to have irregular bleeding sometimes, like yes. I, I'm not prepared for that. So it's not quite my thing. So some people actually have problems with that because irregular yeah. bleeding sometimes means that you can't, you know, especially if you're religious, you can't go to the, you know, to the, you know, you can't oh. go to pray. You can't do a lot of things. Um, so, so some patients, they do prefer the birth control. But uh. if it's working for you, yeah. Like I, yeah so I believe there's so what many methods. Like, whatever yeah, yeah, works yeah, for yeah. you, just stick to it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's something that you should definitely... Yeah. And continue. I think the, the implant is also like a one-time fee that's pretty expensive compared to yes. like paying... Yes, you know, a I, sum every month. Yeah, so exactly. it really depends. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think if you're forgetful, you don't know how to like take your pills on time, then it's probably safer for you to take the yeah. implant. <laughs> so either the injection or the implant yeah, right. would be good if you if you are not, if you can't remember. Mm. So I would tell patients in the take it first thing in the morning when you wake up or last thing at night before you go to bed. Yeah, okay. I do that. That's I take it best, before I sleep. That's the best way to mm. remember it actually. Okay. Have you had patients where um where they gotten pregnant even with birth control of course yeah um and like, again why? it depends on how you use it so if you're if you a lot of the time they haven't been taking it properly or they've missed some tablets and they forgot about it or sometimes they they start taking some other medication <gasps> oh. so the most that's why i always ask patients to always tell the person that they're taking birth control and people always assume medications just mean medications that the doctor prescribes. It also includes herbal stuff as well. Mm. So sometimes the herbal supplements? stuff- Supplements? Supplements, supplements not so much. Okay. Actually the herbal medications, sometimes it makes your liver break down the uh, hormones a bit faster. Right. So then if you, if, like I said, if your hormone levels don't stay stable in your blood, then you could potentially release an egg and therefore potentially get pregnant. Mm. So we do advise you that if you miss one day of the pill, take the next, you know, take it as soon as you can. If you've missed two days, please go and see somebody mm. and, and just make sure that you don't get pregnant. Mm. I, I have a question. Of course. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, we all, it's a Q&A. It's yeah. not even a conversation <laughs> anymore. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> so, um, fun. so I'm a shy girl mm -hmm. and I come to the doctors and then I lie. Okay. I come to you and I don't really tell you the truth. Um, are there consequences to not being completely transparent with your doctor? Yeah, there are actually. Uh, so sometimes patients don't like to tell me things, uh, which happens. And a lot of the time, um, it's also because a lot of these patients that come in maybe bring their parents with them. Oh yeah. Into the consultation. Ooh. And I think that if you... If you don't not want to discuss, if you're not going to have an honest discussion with me because your parents are around, then perhaps you should come without your parents. I personally mm. think that. I experienced that before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Same. So I went to the doctor. I think I was maybe, was it 18, 19? At the time, I was no longer a virgin, but obviously my mother didn't know. And I felt, I think I had either was it yeast infection or something down there that I needed to be checked. And I went in there. Doctor asked me a question that requires me saying whether or not I've had sex or not. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> so he actually, I think he caught it. He told my mom, okay, I need to uh, monitor her. So I'm going to bring her to the room. That's when he said, have you had sex before? I won't tell your mom. It's okay. I just need to know. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, definitely happened before. Yeah. How was yours? I mean, for me, same thing. Yeah. yeah, same thing. I had to be pulled aside by the doctor. But in the UK... Um, before I could get my free, oh sorry, before I could get my free birth control, they had to yeah. have me fill up a form, oh. and I was really worried because I went to the women's health clinic, and then there were pregnant people everywhere, and then some of them were teens. So I asked my boyfriend to follow me, and then when I was going to go into the consultation room, the doctor was like, "No, nobody allowed except you. Yeah. You're the only one allowed in the consultation yes. room." Yeah, it because they're be very like that. worried that if your boyfriend is like 
there and let's just say he's abusing you or something yeah. he might coerce you to lie on the sheet exactly. or lie to the yeah. doctor so yeah I would say that I would rather yeah. go to a gynecologist alone unless yeah my mom I mean my mom's yeah. cool correct, so correct, I don't mind correct. bringing her along yeah but we don't have to practice here no right? we don't it, mm. in fact if I tried that I probably will get stoned <laughs> Oh, right. So your car- your parents get very upset. Sometimes when I tell the parents to maybe you know go outside, they get very upset uh, with me. Actually, of course. it's yeah. it's, yeah. it's understandable. It's a very different um, culture culture here. Yeah. But I do feel that you know that you should try and be honest. Remember that whatever you tell your doctor is private and confidential. Yeah. So I just want to reassure girls that even if let's say you told me that you've had sex before, right? And your parents come in, you know, shouting at me and banging table and saying, "I want to know if my child has had sex." Actually, legally, I cannot tell the parents. Mm. I cannot tell them anything mm. because whatever you tell me in that room is private and confidential. Mm. So patient confidentiality is something that, you know, we do respect. And mm. um, but I think a lot of girls are scared. They're scared that of if course. they tell me that suddenly their parents come, yeah. the parents will dig up the records and then they'll be caught. Yeah. yeah. But I, I definitely remember that feeling of saying yes, half relieved, half embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm getting this because I had sex and now I can't even tell my mom. It was such a conflicting mm. moment for me mm. as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think when shame comes into play, yeah. then it affects yeah. the way that you do things, you know, because yes. you feel guilty and you feel ashamed. Yeah. So course, yeah. functioning from a place of shame, like affects all your decision making. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, destigmatizing this is like really important. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. think it is. So if you are someone who is not able to tell your family or your parents that you've had, had sex before, um, just know that if you go to the doctors alone, your confi- confidentiality is it's, protected. Yes. Mm. Yeah, your privacy is going to be protected. So mm. don't be afraid and please go get checked. Yeah. Yeah. What are the... Is there any message you want to tell like teenagers who could be watching or young ladies or men about not having safe sex? Okay. The implications. So safe sex is important for more than one reason. I personally feel that... You should be empowered enough. Number one, good on you for getting contraception because you should be empowered to make your own fertility choices. You should decide when you want to get pregnant and if you want to get pregnant. Mm. And, you know, I know that we always say that men don't like to use condoms. I really do believe no condom, no sex. Mm. I really think you sh- that women should learn to tell the men, if you're yeah. not going to use a condom, tough. Yeah. And we should stand up to it. You, you know, you, you should learn to say that to, to your partner, actually. And if your partner cares enough about you, Yeah, they will say it's okay. We'll yeah. use whatever we need to use. It's a great way to see if your man is a walking red flag too. Whether he's a high value man. Yeah. Or low value trash. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> because it's true, you know, yeah. like I've definitely had encountered where even after I say, hey, since we're not having, we don't have condom, let's not have it. No, baby, let's do it. It's okay. You know, they'll mm. try to coerce you to mm. it. And the peer pressure is real it's, because yeah. you're in the moment. Mm. And sometimes saying no in that moment is quite hard. It because is. Actually, do you have an encouraging word about like, so I'm sure a lot of like first time girls feel pressure into having sex. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have enough conversations about how do you protect yourself if you want to say no. Do you, yeah. is there any advice that you can give? What I believe is there's never a, that's never a wrong time to say no. Even if he's just about to penetrate and you decide you change your mind, you can say no then. You should be able to say no whenever you, you yourself are not comfortable with it. Mm. And I think that that's something that we need to educate our girls. Right. You know, that we shouldn't feel pressured just because, oh, he's already gone through all the trouble. You know, he's bought me dinner. He's already gotten undressed and he's mm. just about to penetrate, but I suddenly don't feel comfortable. So what? Yeah. It's your right. Right. So I think that that's important. I think we don't listen to our instincts. You don't. No. You know, it's Not like in the moment. Yeah. It's harder. It's like I can I have been like sexually harassed, let's just say by on somebody on the street or like they they just kind of graze my bum. And then the first thing I think is, oh, I don't think he meant to do that. I think it was an accident, but it's so clearly yeah. I feel violated. I know this guy intentionally did this to me and I just turn off my instincts and I decide not to listen to it. So I find yeah, as I get older, I have to try and listen to my instinct and listen to my body a lot more because I feel when you're young and people don't teach you how to listen to what yes. your body needs, then mm. you start to, yeah, your mind starts to come up with things yeah. where you're like, okay, yeah, I just bought me the dinner. The yeah, exactly. Person. It justifies yeah, that behavior. You, you shouldn't justify it. And mm. I think that that's one thing that we need to remember that there's never there's never a wrong time to say no. Mm. If, you've, if deep down your gut says no, just say no. 
oh my gosh. Yeah, that brought me to some memories that, you know, the moment, like you said, that they're about to penetrate, actually, there are thoughts of just, oh my God, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, right? Yeah. But mm. they've done it all. Maybe it's too late. Yeah, definitely experienced mm. that before. But I think that we should we should remember that it's never too late to say. Yeah. yeah. If you if you feel that you're not ready, if you don't feel that it's right, just say you know a, a, a man who cares enough about you will respect that. Will respect the fact that actually you're not ready. That's fine. Mm. You know. Mm. But yeah. and if he does not respect that, then maybe it's not the right. It's the right not the right. One. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe yeah. he he should be crossed off that list. Yes. Because yes. sex or making love should feel safe. It that is what I have finally got to experience. Mm. It should feel safe. It should feel good. Mm. It shouldn't feel pressured. That's the last thing it should yeah. feel. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I unfortunately, not everybody has experienced that before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. All the talks about sex, <laughs> about protection, about birth control. I hope you guys learned a thing or two because I learned so much, especially from this second half of the conversation. Yes. Dr. Lo, thank you so, so You're much. You're welcome. Nicole as well. I think you, you asked really good question. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm really curious as yeah. well. And yeah. I find that even for me, I have a lot of things that I don't yeah. have answered. So right. it's really cool that you're sitting here in front of me and I yeah. get to talk <laughs> to a gynecologist almost yeah. as my friend as opposed to being in an office. So I yeah. really appreciate you. Yeah, because me sometimes on. even when we go see doctor, they don't really explain. No, not yeah. all. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah, not yeah. And in, in that patient doctor so, dynamic, sometimes I feel a bit scared because it's not course. it's not like same. I'm not like same level kawan kawan eh, we're chilling, you know. <laughs> now nah, I'll be like, hey doctor, ah, you know ah, that day ah, my pepe ichi ah. You know, I can't do that with my gynecologist at the hospital, you know. Oh my god, speaking of pepe ichi, uh, <laughs> how do we avoid <laughs> segue? No, serious, how do we avoid yeast infection? Okay. So Very important. Yeast infection, right, actually. For all those who are worried out there, yeast infection is not a sexually transmitted infection. Oh, okay. okay, great. So number one, okay? So don't so it's your my boyfriend. Own fault, <laughs> so it's my own fault if I have yeast infection. No, like, he, it, actually, what happens is, is that, um, okay, so our vagina has got so many different bacteria and yeast yeah. that live together in harmony. But the thing is, sometimes when you're stressed, if you take hormones, or if let's say, you know, that there's been a change in the environment, sometimes the acidity inside your vagina changes. So when the acidity inside changes, certain bacteria die and then the yeast go, woohoo, will invade this ah. area. <laughs> and yeast is horrible. It's very itchy. itchy. It's very yeah. uncomfortable. It's so smelly. It's sometimes. common too though, right? So it's very common. About 70% of women have at least had it once. I hear it's easy to treat, but it's hard to cure. That's what I um, hear about It doesn't infection. completely get cured because this is a normal yeast that lives within your vagina right so if let's say you are certain practices that you're having like if you, you know for example if you're pregnant or if you are immune you know let's say you're a bit tired and your body's a bit run down then yes yeah, sometimes your yeast infections will flare up mm. but the most common reason why you get yeast infection recurrent yeast infections is maybe you haven't killed it all so you kill some of it and then the, what's left will slowly come back uh, again. Ah, right. Yeah. I see, I see. Right, right, right. It doesn't normally have the smell. The smell is actually the other end of the spectrum. Uh -huh. um, so basically when the acidity overcorrects too much, then you get another bacteria overtaking and ah, that's the one with the smell. Okay. okay, so that's not yeast infection. No, the yeast oh. infection is the itchy one. Okay. The itchy, itchy, okay. Yeah, the yeah. itchy one. Oh Curdy my God. And if you scratch and then it bleeds yeah. and then you pee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy mama! <laughs> yeah, it's so terrible. <laughs> yes, and then, so if you've had in yeast infection or if you're listening to this with your yeast infection, please go, go check, check with a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go, yeah. You, you can, I think a lot of my patients, like I said, they'll go first get over-the-counter mm. uh, medications yeah. and if you if that doesn't work, please come and, you know, see a doctor because sometimes we're, you may not be treating the correct bug. Yeah. True. Yeah. So that's, that's why true. it's not working. <laughs> yeah, and don't suffer in silence. I yeah. feel it's really such a pain to suffer with these like itches and burning sensations with UTI and everything. Yeah. It's much better. Like I feel the relief when I go check, get it checked. They yes. give me some ointment, some cream, something, yeah. and then instantly, give me a solution. Yeah, my life just gets the quality of my life improves instantly. Yeah. So even if uh, it's yeah. a small thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't suffer in silence. It's very uncomfortable, actually. Mm, yeast yeah. infections are horrible. Mm. Do men you get know? that? Men, they don't tend to get it as such, but there are some where they have like recurrent uh, infections and sometimes this yeast sort of goes underneath the foreskin. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard So of sometimes, yeah, yeah, so then when they start it scratching, then you better ask them go and check. All right. <laughs> All right. Wait, I have one last controversial okay. question. I just one. Okay. What do you feel about male contraceptive? Okay, I think it's great um, that, you know, that, but would you trust your man to take the contraception? <laughs> 
Good question. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> It's not so you can them. trust men. Yeah. I yeah. mean, sometimes, you know, they to pick up their clothes from the floor <laughs> so they can forget. Yeah, you really think that they will take the contraception? Mm, and they I don't are know. not responsible for being pregnant. Yeah, not Nothing yeah, will happen exactly. to them. So right. yeah. The consequences for yes, them is it's not so as low. much. So it's way... So it's more yeah. convenient for them to forget. Yeah. Because yeah. if I forget, holy mama, I don't want a yeah. baby in my stomach right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but they don't. Mm. For them, it's just... Just be a daddy, okay? They'll just be like, oh, okay, no, it happened. Never mind, let me take care of you and then yeah and then <laughs> resent you after that oh that's a whole other podcast man yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so I think I personally would take my responsibility for my own fertility yeah, yeah, yeah. So agreed, agreed, agreed that's my opinion yeah, yeah, but yeah. there yeah. is though right uh, yeah. it, I think it's it's not available yet I think oh. it's being researched right so yeah I hear that they say that oh it affects yeah. men and it affects their mental health Shut and it makes them emotional yeah can you imagine that if they'll, you know the man flu already kills them can you imagine <laughs> having Symptoms. Can you imagine? Like we get breast tenderness, we get mood swings. The men, oh my goodness! Can oh, you imagine? No, That'll be like amplified complain. like hundred times. I think cannot. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. And our pain tolerance is much higher, so we can yeah. deal with it a lot oh, more. Imagine men get period cramps. Oh, oh my god, they'll be insufferable. <laughs> I cannot even imagine. Oh my gosh. Damn, women are strong as okay. AF. Yeah, yeah, I will take. I will take my. I don't think I will do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just yeah. penetrate, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think with that, we have come to the end of this episode. And of course, I do want to share now with all the talks about contraceptive. And sometimes you don't get to have access to Dr. Lo like we have. Mm. So where do you go? Who do you call? And you don't want to tell your mom. You don't want to tell you that. You don't want to talk to your friend about it because you're a little bit embarrassed for now. That's okay. We're trying to, you know, break the stigma, mm. hopefully to create more awareness to be able to have this conversation. But in the meantime, actually, Bea has this social media platform called Ask Maya, mm -hmm. right? Where they share information about birth control pills. So at any time of the day, maybe some of the questions we didn't manage to answer, or if you have more questions, you can check that out. Uh, they're also on Facebook. There is an FB messenger where you can also chat with an AI chatbot. Mm -hmm. hey, actually, AI nowadays is very king. Them you know? king, them I've been king, using yeah. chat GPT a lot. Yeah, all the time eh, yeah. to do my work, my influencing hey, some work. Some of my episodes, I ask them questions, like, how do I ask phrase this question but yeah um, like I think AI has really changed the game yes. because let's be honest sometimes we call whatever hotline takes forever but yeah. having AI really really yeah. makes it a lot more convenient and accessible to information that we really need so guys go check it out um, because it addresses not only contraception methods but also endometriosis heavy menstrual bleeding whatever it is that you find important as a woman to know and understand your body better so go check it out and go ask Maya. <laughs> but right now, I want to ask you both uh, one closing question. Usually, I have three, but I'll just ask one. What are you currently head over heels for? <laughs> this is the hardest question. <laughs> I love their reaction. If you guys can go one. back to all the episodes. Every time I ask this question, right, they blank out for a bit. So, Nicole, what, what are you head over heels for? Um, being 30. Oh, I love that. I think so. Uh, doctor, any advice yeah. for someone turning 30 soon? Ayo, you're very young. Enjoy yeah. it. Embrace it. <laughs> I mean, what I, what I feel is that like, I like myself more and more as I get older. I, yeah. I love wow. myself so much more. And every time I look back at myself when I was 22, <laughs> <laughs> it is not yes. fun to be young, actually. Yes. You're, you're yeah. constantly tormented. You're, you're just not a self-actualized individual person. You no know, offense, it's like, Gen Z, but... Yeah, but I... We've as, been there. As I get older, I find that I am a lot more sure about what I want and I I like myself a lot more and I think that I appreciate my age. So I think I'm head over heels about I love that. Yeah, growing up. You know, actually. I love that so much because I think some of our past episodes, most of our guests also who are turning 30, finally in their early 30s, are learning to love themselves more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly why I'm doing this. Yeah. To fall head over heels for yourself first. Yeah. And I love that yeah. more and more women, um, men as well, are going through that. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Yes, love it. Yeah. What about you, doctor? I would say that I'm head over heels over my children. <laughs> How many that's do you have? Space. I've got two. I've got one 11-year-old and one 3-year-old. Oh. Do you have the birds and bees talks with them? Yeah, I was just telling, I was just telling, uh, you know, at the earlier that um, my then seven-year-old suddenly asked me, what is sperm? <laughs> and I was shocked. <laughs> How did you address I, that? I normally have these conversations with adults, you know, <laughs> with patients. 
But I was really shocked because I did not expect, I was caught off guard and I did not expect to have that conversation. But I'm really inspired by your mum. So I think Mm. after this, I'm going to go back and have a really heart to heart with my older daughter and talk about, you know, Mm. these issues because I think it's important that they learn to love themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish I had that, but it's okay. I can have that late. I'm yeah. having that now and I'll hopefully be able to give that to yeah. my future children as well. But thank you so much, ladies, for coming on. I had so much fun chatting. I think sex is always fun to talk about. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as much as we love having sex, it's great. Stay protected mm. if you don't want to get pregnant. But if you want to get pregnant, yeah, then different story. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all the best and conceive soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, I think with that, is there any last words you want to say? No, we're we're good? good. All right, with that, like I always say, don't forget to fall head over heels for yourself first and always, and don't forget your birth control. Bye. (laughs) Bye.